For a while now, I've been saying that Figure Arts has been killing it with the Across the Spider-Verse wave much better than Marvel Legends, and your money is allocated towards something really premium. But I fear that the doomsday clock for Figure Arts has officially started ticking. And to best exemplify that, we got Spider-Punk from Across the Spider-Verse finally making its way on over to the States via one of my favorite people that provide figures for the channel. I want to give a huge shout out to Mike's Toys and Stuff for not only providing the figure, but also excellent customer service. If you guys are ever in the Southern California area, specifically around Orange, Mike's Toys and Stuff, look him up. He has figure arts, Mayfix, of course, Marvel Legends, McFarlane Toys, and pretty much everything else in between. So if you guys are looking for something, there's a really good chance that he might have it at a really good competitive price. So check him out. He's also got a website. I'll probably link the website down below in the description. Mike's Toys and Stuff. Check him out. And he was able to supply me with the Figure Arts Spider Punk here from Bandai Namco and SH Figure Arts. And you can see that this is probably going to be the best way to really kind of start to set a little bit of a rule of expectation when it comes to figure arts because I, I, I'm looking at the Marvel Legends and I remarked that despite very lacking amount of accessories when it came to the Marvel Legends for Across the Spider-Verse Spider-Punk I figured you know what this is actually not a bad representation of the character he's lanky he's skinny but he's got the punk rock aesthetic with the outfit the blue the red the black the spikes all the bedazzlement around the vest the spikes on over on his head and his shoulders there's just so much that was actually working in favor of the marvel legends and the only major drawback that i can really still stick with after all these months now ever since its release was lack of accessories sure he's got the guitar and he's only got one web shooting hand so i figured why not two web shooting hands one Another bonus accessory one of his hands is stuck with the pick I don't know but outside of that I figured that there was actually some really good material happening with the Marvel Legends when I pulled the figure arts out of the box despite seeing already some of the promo picks and seeing some of the expectations that were then set for what you usually get out of the box with figure arts whether it be an assortment of hands bonus accessories that you otherwise wouldn't have even thought about an unmasked head I thought to myself, yeah, there's quite a bit of a standard with figure arts, especially with the prior released Across the Spider-Verse figures. I remarked a number of times that Gwen and Miles and even Miguel O'Hara to an extent are really great within that wave. But unfortunately, I feel like Punk might just be the first major disappointment out of that entire wave. And the best way that I can really kind of embody all of that into one sentence, it would be this. Here we have the Marvel Legends. Here we have the SH Figure Arts. And despite the Marvel Legends being a little taller for some extraneous reason, you have the Figure Arts here that is, for the most part, really well proportioned, really well scaled. But you see that in terms of physicality, they're almost kind of neck and neck to the point where I feel like if someone's really not looking into the very, 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 very fine details of the outfit, of certain accessories, of certain little nuances, not many people are really going to be able to pick out the difference. I, I would argue that maybe the average parent or teenager on the shelf at a Target or a Walmart, you were to put these guys next to them and they'll just be like, oh look, two figures. This one looks a little darker in terms of certain shades, but outside of that, it's kind of looking very similar. It's only once you finally start squinting your eyes and you're an avid collector like myself, that then you could pick out the little details in the really minute aesthetical differences. And that's very funny to really mention right now because I don't know if some of you guys know, I'm also a little bit of a gamer. And most recently when it came to picking out very specific details in the background, a lot of these kind of observations have kind of come with a wave of controversy around the recent announcement of the PlayStation 5 Pro. And you got Mark Cerny out there going, if you guys take a look at the details, you'll notice that in the background, you see the true power of the PS5. And quite honestly, I feel like just a little bit of that is happening here between Marvel Legends and Figure Arts, Spider-Punk. You got 1080p or 720p, and then you got 1080p or 4K. 1080p, 4K. 
And that's retroactively about it. From far away, you could see that they're pretty identical as far as nailing the primary colors. Red, black, blue, of course, with a few chrome details for the spikes and all the punk rock aesthetics. But then when you get a little closer, you'll notice that, yeah, the red, it's funny because the red for the arms and even a little bit of the mask and the undershirt where the webbing kind of starts is almost identical. It's very, very difficult to kind of point out the little bit of differences. But when it comes to the boots, it's really where you do get like a maroon red to kind of give it a little bit more of a shinier, very leathery look to the boots that I really do appreciate and feels a little bit more quality on the figure arts versus the very plastic, plasticky and rubbery texture to the Marvel Legends that you've come to expect to, so, you know, cut down a little bit on the cost. But outside of that, I'm, it really does need a closer eye for inspection. I feel like one of the best areas would have to be the pants. They're black and they have that nice little pattering with the little checkerboard pattering right there where you see an awful lot of the achromatic aberration to kind of keep it within video game terms. But then you'll notice that the figure arts went the extra mile of adding the little details of the patches, the little bit of punk artwork that you see within some of the stitching right here, whether it be the graffiti art or the little Black Widow spider symbol there on his right thigh, a little bit of extra detail behind the belts, the straps are kind of hanging off of his overalls, and then an added kind of layer of that chromatic aberration, that checkerboard kind of square pa pattern that you have happening within the background of the pants. Whereas over here, you just have a couple of areas that have that little design, but outside of the patches, outside of the details, you're not going to find any of that. The shirt is almost identical, save for the lighter baby blue shade on the figure arts versus that of the Marvel Legends. Same thing goes for those little, like, straps or whatever he's got going, kind of encroaching around the forearms and the hands. And then, the, of course, the spikish that's happening within the wristband as well as the armband over here. The very Freddie Mercury-looking uh, wrist uh, armband that he's got right there with a the little bit of spikes. Like I said, it's borderline identical except you're just going to have a little bit of added paint application because that's exactly what you pay for. Outside of that, you then get the vest, which in terms of physicality, in terms of molding, almost identical, and I could almost argue it's made out of the same quality of pla rubberized plastic or rubberized material. The only major differences, though, of course, are going to be the minute details. You see some extra pins, a little bit of added layer of paint applications and detail to the pins to make them stand out a little bit more, have better quality. The positioning is just a slightly bit different as far as where the ones on the left are. And then when you take a look at the back, you see that the chrome paint on the top part of the spikes right there is a little bit more pronounced on the figure arts. And frankly, it looks like the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man graffiti art there on the back is a little cleaner on the figure arts, but because it's cleaner, it looks a bit more pronounced, a little bit more, like I mentioned before, 4K, high def, however you want to call it. Some added pins right there, missing pins on the Marvel Legends. But I got to be honest, if you're going for a much more punk aesthetic, the, uh, the very smudgy graffiti art on that of the Marvel Legends... I think it's a little bit more true to character than that of the figure arts. I, subjectively, I'd argue that I might like the Marvel Legends one better the way that it's stamped and, like I said, looks very imperfect because that's very punky for Spider-Punk to do versus that of the figure arts. And for the love of God, do not get me started on the head sculpt, which, frankly, like I said, it's almost identical. Even the head shape is the same except... The Marvel Legends is a little bit on the bigger side, a little bit more bulbous here. When it comes to the back side right there, you'll notice that it's a bit more protruding as opposed to the very oval design of the figure arts. But design-wise, even the eyes look pretty identical. They look a little bit more stretched out on the Marvel Legends because of the way that the overall thing is sculpted. The only other noticeable differences I'm noticing is that the patterning of the webbing is a little bit different, but not by much. You see that a little bit of added, I guess you could say, eyeliner was now dripping, quote-unquote, from that of the Marvel Legends. That, again, subjectively, I wouldn't blame you if you prefer over the very angular, just one single teardrop on the Spider-Punk for the figure arts. And I can't remember if that's screen accurate. I'll have to check out the movie. Which I'm actually going to be doing pretty soon as of the recording of this video. I'll be checking out a live orchestra composing the score for Across the Spider-Verse while the movie's playing. So that should be cool. But outside of that, you'll notice that the spikes are also a little bit different. They're pretty even as far as the way that they're sized up here on the Marvel Legends. Whereas the figure arts has them at different sizes. But of course, that's like I said, kind of feeds a little bit into the character to be a little bit rebellious. 
but the Chrome applications are almost, I think they're just a little shinier and a little added in terms of layering when it comes to the figure arts. But outside of that, like I said, the sentiment, the one thing that I keep going back to is that it truly does feel like you're going from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5. You're going from Xbox One X to the Xbox Series X. You're going from 1080p to 4K. Outside of that though, the minutia of what's waiting for you under the hood is primarily the same. Though where it becomes probably the most stark different is of course the articulation because that's generally where an awful lot of that $60 price difference really doesn't tell. You go for something that's generally about 25 bucks for the Marvel Legends and you get your standard kind of points of articulation as far as where you can bend, where you can move the arms, the crotch piece as far as enabling the legs to stretch up. Of course, you're going to have the ankle joints that I'm not a personal fan of. And then of course the knee joints, the elbows, the torso piece, the, the head, you know, all the general stuff you would expect out of a Marvel Legends. But with figure arts, you're almost always expecting something that's of higher quality when it comes to set articulation. And with figure arts, at least with this new uh, second iteration, prior to the first one that I had to go and do a, a quick swap with, you generally do get the higher caliber tier of articulation, considering that yours doesn't have the same QC problems that we've been dealing with when it comes to certain figure arts outside of the Across the Spider-Verse wave. If you guys have been watching the channel for quite some time, you guys would have heard me remark that a number of figure arts figures from Spider-Man characters outside of Across the Spider-Verse have had this consistent QC problem that has now kind of bled on over to the competitor, Mafex, where certain arms would start to squeak after a couple of movements. They would start off pretty smooth, and then over time, they would just kind of stick. And the time that I'm speaking about is not even that short. It would just be like a couple of days, and then immediately they would get stuck to the point where I either need some kind of dishwater soap, you know, soapy water, or some kind of shock oil to get in there and actually loosen up the joint and risk it for not breaking. The head should be able to turn 360 on its ball joint, but as you can see, blatantly stuck. And that's provided if it doesn't snap off like my original one did. This is pretty much what I was alluding to at the beginning of the review with the Doomsday Clock analogy. Had my first break with a figure arts figure. And out of all of them, it's from the Across the Spider-Verse wave, the one that I was praising the most for as far as the most recent Fjord Spideys that they've been delving out. So imagine my dismay seeing that one of the joints finally not only got immensely stuck, but also legitimately got warped from the inside and just twisted off like a bottle cap. It just completely came off. And shout out to Mike's Toys and Stuff once again, not only for providing the figure, but also helping me out with their customer service in providing me a replacement for the review but unfortunately that replacement also had a very sticky head joint not only at the top of the dumbbell joint but also at the bottom of the neck stump which means that turning the head 360 having it tilt in any kind of direction it should be possible the joint is technically still there but you can see that it's very very sticky and I really don't want to repeat of the first time with it just completely snapping off and this is already after applying hot air with a blow dryer or very soapy water to get it to loosen up on the inside. It's still sticky. It's still like this. And this is rather inexcusable for your arts. If anything, it's making me a little bit dubious for the remainder of the Across the Spider-Verse wave and wondering whether or not maybe it's about time that someone else should pick up the license. Not unlike the way that the No Way Home figures are now being made by Mafex. So one can only be curious about whether or not Mafex would be interested in doing some Across the Spider-Verse figures. Do be aware of the collar that he has around his neck that does limit a little bit more of the articulation that then comes into contact with the vest right there. So just do keep that in mind when you're moving the head. When it comes to the arms though, it's actually one of my favorite joints out of the entire thing because not only can you rotate the arms 360 vertically and extend towards the sides, but you'll notice that you do have, in fact, a dumbbell butterfly joint that allows further flexibility of the arm to allow not only shrugging motion up and down, but also some decent butterfly motion side to side, forward and back. You can kind of see it, make it out right about right there. So that's pretty cool. Despite the vest being in place, it does look like some really good flexibility can still be found there. And then you do have bicep joints, though. It's kind of interesting that they're structured and molded differently on either arm. They both rotate 360 degrees, but you'll notice that the one on the right kind of has like this 
cupping sort of design to the overall bicep, whereas the one on the right, I mean, I'm sorry, his left, is designed like a straight horizontal cut, mimicked to then kind of blend a little easier for the sleeve. So I thought that was actually pretty clever that they didn't decide to just mimic the entire uh, joints one to the other. So it's it actually feels faithful and native to the figure's design overall. And I really love it when you know companies decide to take that extra mile. So kudos to that. The two joints at the elbow are fully able to bend all the way up, though. I feel like they could bend a little f more upwards, but they stop a little dead right there. So... I was kind of looking forward to some extra flexibility, but ne nevertheless, they do bend at both joints. And then, of course, the ball joint, the figure arts ball joint, that is, that is found on the wrist, allows the hand to fully rotate in place 360, as well as bend very fluidly upwards and downwards, as you can kind of see right there. So that's really good to see. Torso is a little on the disappointing side versus other figure arts that I've dealt with, even ones from within the Across the Spider-Verse wave, because you technically do have a mid-torso cut. However, they did that thing where... They conjoin the vest to the top piece, so this is all one piece. And due to his physicality, or his overall physique rather, the way that his body is overall shaped and designed, he's got this very planky sort of feel to his abdomen. And in doing so, it's very difficult to rotate. So you don't really have full 360 rotation. It does nudge side to side as you can kind of see it right about right there turns left and right pretty decently on the mid torso cut and some really good extension and crunching forwards and backwards but the more flexibility you get is actually out of the waist joint you can kind of see it right there crunching and flexing towards the front towards the back side to side and allows further mobility on the obliques but it's not really found out of the mid torso joint you're mainly finding it out of the waist which in turn can also sort of nudge side to side but it never fully rotates because like i said everything is just so planky that when you turn it it just kind of comes into contact with the top piece and therefore you get some incredible amount of resistance so i definitely don't recommend bending that or pressing that any further otherwise you risk breaking the figure so just do keep that in mind because that's definitely something that i fear the marvel legends is able to do much better is turning the waist cut full 360 all the way around and being able to kind of incline and crunch the mid torso joint just a little better because it's not restricted as much as that of the figure arts because they're not going for that extra sense of detail or sense of realism but when it comes to the top leg joints they can still fully flex almost all the way up like so right about right there they do have a bit of a drop down functionality so when you kind of place them back they're actually pulled down so you kind of have to place them either back in place or if you're looking for the extension towards the sides you can see right there that they do a very fair amount right about right there and extending towards the back, it slightly does it because of that drop-down joint. It can kind of sort of flex towards the back, but the ass sculpt does kind of get in the way along with the overalls. So do be careful coming into contact with them right there. And technically, there is a bit of a swivel joint right below those leg joints. So it's not... I almost don't even want to consider it a thigh joint because it's not even in the mid part of the thigh. I feel like it would have benefited better if it was kind of halfway through the part of the thigh right here. But instead, it's a little too high for my personal preference. I feel like, I don't know, it's kind of a wasted opportunity that there's a there's a thigh swivel up there because when you try to swivel it, it's really the top leg joint that's doing most of the swiveling. So I don't know what benefit this swivel joint really adds besides maybe allowing the leg to kind of extend a little further. So yeah, if I wanted to turn the leg all the way around, I would have preferred the thigh swivel to be a little lower down here at the bottom here. So it could probably benefit the overall leg and posture way better, especially when you take into account that there's not much swiveling for the rest of the leg. That's actually another benefit that the Marvel Legends has because you can technically rotate the bottom boot pieces on a kind of, I guess you could argue, a shin swivel. So there's an actual shin swivel right underneath the knee that allows the boot, the entirety of the boot, to rotate 360 horizontally on the Marvel Legends. And that's not found on the figure arts whatsoever, not even on the boots. Right above it, you do have the two very comfortable knee joints that I really like figure arts to do because they feel pretty good in hand. But no other swiveling of any kind, so that's, a, like I said, a lost opportunity. And then you do have the ankle joints that fully allow the leg, or rather the foot, to bend downwards and upwards and rotate in place and feel pretty good in hand as far as the smoothness. Except mine, again, going back to potential QC problems, the one on the right has, both of them have these pieces that serve as like little guardrails. You've seen them on some figure arts prior, but... There's something funky about the one on the right that gets caught within the cuff of the boot. And therefore, I have to like finagle it for like a good minute to get the 
foot to actually bend downwards like so. Because if I just try to do it very casually, it doesn't do it. You see right there? It just stops. So I have to kind of press it forward to kind of guide the rail out of the way and allow the foot to fully bend down. So you, it, it needs some futzing to actually get that to happen, which is okay. You know, eventually it does happen, but at the same time, you, you also want, especially for the price that you're paying for figure arts, you want there to be an added layer of convenience. So after a while, you're like, okay, I shouldn't need to futz. I really want to just bend the ankle right away, but instead I have to kind of do a little bit of extra work, and uh, I don't know how exactly I feel about that. But when you're able to look past that, you do have some extra toesy articulation that kind of bends all the way up, but it is a little bit on the shorter side versus some other figure arts. And that's why you pay the extra bucks, right? To get the toesies that even the Marvel Legends cannot have. No, I I'm definitely kidding because you could see right there that, yeah, you do get the added extra joints and the quality of the joints. But again, going back to my analogy, 1080p versus 4K, and the articulation sort of reflects that as well, especially when you take into consideration that the Marvel Legends, despite lacking some quality of set articulation or some extra joints, it also harnesses some joints that even the Figures doesn't have, like the boot swivels or the better comfortability of the mid-torso joint that allows full rotation all the way around, or the fact that I'm able to move the head without risking breaking it. And you know what else you also pay the Figure Arts extra for? Accessories. I already mentioned that the Marvel Legends, despite the $25 price tag, I still felt they could have done way better with the accessories. Because he does come with an extra hand, singular, not even plural. He's got both hands already kind of molded to favor the guitar. So on the side, they only threw in one extra web shooting hand. What the hell, Marvel Legends? To this day, I'm still kind of pissed off about that, to be quite fair. With figure arts, they still remind you that they are Ace H figure arts. You get hands up the ass. No, don't, 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 don't make it weird. Naturally, he's got the neutral hands on his person, but on the side, he's going to come with fisted hands, open, slightly stretched out, kind of reaching out hands. Open, you can almost interpret as wall crawling hands, or you can interpret as the gesture hands that he uses to tell Miles to use the hands, watch the hands. You know, Hans might. Like he mentioned, that sounded more Australian than it did British, I'm sorry. He's also got the web shooting hands, and then he also comes with gripping hands, though it's kind of strange that no web accessories were thrown in with the figure, so I don't know exactly what he could be gripping onto. It could be just there for show, in case you want to back him up with some secondary accessories you could find in the aftermarket, or if you want him to hold onto the dimensional jumper wristband here. I can't remember what the official term or the title for this thing is, but of course, it is the watch that's utilized to jump in between dimensions, utilized by the entire Spider team. And it's pretty similar to that of the other characters, uh, a dimension watch, whatever you want to call it. It's got the same aesthetic, chrome and red paint, sized uh, accurately to that of Spider-Punk's skinny wrist. However, much like the Marvel Legends, he does come with an extra pair of guitar-centric hands. One of them has the black pick kind of embedded and sculpted right into the hand itself. And then the other one has this gesture to make it look like he's fretting the guitar, which in my opinion is sculpted immaculately. I just, I, I don't know what it is, but there's something very well detailed and sculpted of, and nuanced about the way that the hand is designed to make it look like it's actually fretting a guitar. Like that's the, that's the hand of a guitarist. Whereas over here, it just looks like he's trying to pinch cheeks, even though, I know what they were trying to aim at. They were trying to go for a hand that looks like it could hold the guitar in place. But, I mean, here's where you get another very stark difference as to where money goes for figure arts and why figure arts has made a name for themselves versus that of some other competing, uh, competing companies that are going for the same character but at different price values. And the, out of all the things embedded within Spider-Punk here, it's actually the guitar hand, one of the guitar hands, that I think exemplifies this very accurately. And speaking of said guitar, you got, of course, the guitar accessories. This is the Marvel Legends, and then this is the figure arts. And you'll notice that, similar to the figure itself, it's also another case of 1080p versus 4K. You could almost even argue that the Marvel Legends one is a little bit on the bigger side, and it's practically a different model than that of the figure arts. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know my guitar models. I don't know. I know some of the 
more popular names such as Les Paul, etc. But I don't know which one is which. Like, I can't look at these models and go, yeah, that's definitively what this... No, I'm not even going to pretend and try to name them. But I can just tell right now that this one's got a bit of a different aesthetic when it comes to the body, the axe, if you will, of the guitar itself versus that of the figure arts. As far as detailing is concerned, though, you'll notice that you have actual chrome paint finishes on the strings as well as the boards right here in the middle of the axe itself. And then you have some extra buttons that are dealt out with that chrome paint right here towards the bottom. But the Legends does come with the Wham bar, so that is an added little detail. But apart from that, they, again, almost look identical. Even the paint applications, the graffiti art on the body itself is kind of the same, except some finer details and some fine refinement in terms of definition is found on that of the figure arts. But outside of that, they're kind of going for a similar aesthetic and a similar pattern. So again, it's just a matter of preference and whether or not you're willing to squint enough to notice those details. The blue strap is also almost identical, except it's a little bit on the thicker side when it comes to the Marvel Legends to hold on to the figure itself. But apart from that, you're, again, kind of 1080p 4K. But if there's one accessory that the Marvel Legends has no way, shape, or form in terms of definition on, it would have to be the one that it's missing, or at least it's missing for now, because I understand that they're doubling down, or double dipping as it were, on the Hobie Brown Marvel Legends Spider-Punk figure coming up here in the fall season. But Figures decided to be a bit nicer to us and including it from the get-go. And that's going to be an unmasked Hobie Brown head sculpt with the additional unmasked neck piece to be able to swap the neck pieces so that he's got a much more accurate look. So you have not only the neck piece right there with the skin tone on it, but the Hobie Brown head sculpt. And you can see right there that kind of keeping in line with the other figure arts uh, figures from, or at least the head sculpts, from the ACH figure arts across the Spider-Verse figures. The detail as far as the expression, the sculpting, the actual amount of time that they put and effort into that is top notch. You got the piercings, you got the expression, the very laid back expression with a little bit of smirkiness there on his left side, the left part of the smile. And then the hair, the way it's done, the way it's textured, it, chef's kiss. I mean, that is amazing. The only slight nitpick would have to be the skin tone. I, I'll have to rewatch the movie again, but for the most part, they nailed the skin tones. And trust me, this guy had me worried even more before when some of those promo photos came out. And I got to be honest... He was looking a little... I, I know that people are going to try to twist these words. I, I don't care. He looked a little too dark. All right? They have a tendency of going either too light or too dark in some of those promo photos. Miguel looked way too pasty in some of those promo art, uh, photo uh, pictures. And thankfully, the final result in hand looked way better. He had a much more caramelized skin tone, a la his Mexican heritage, with a little bit of Irish in there. And now here, Hobie Brown, he, he definitely has the darker skin tone like he did in the movie. And even though I feel like it's still just a little too dark, it's miles better, no pun intended, than that of those original promo photos. So, good thing to see that the final result in hand looks much better. I just think that it could have probably been toned down a little bit more. But at the same time, I can't tell if that's really how it is accurately or if maybe that's just an effect that I'm kind of having a little bit of a Mandela effect due to the way that he's constantly kind of flipping in and out of that newspaper aesthetic when he's on screen. So maybe that's the reason for why I'm kind of having that perspective. So outside of that, what's really carrying this head sculpt though, it's got to be the expression and the sculpting behind that expression that is really top notch. And there's a part of me that almost wants to credit the Hobie Brown unmasked head as reason enough to pick up the figure art, especially since you get the added hands that go miles above, again, no pun there, towards the Marvel Legends, one simple web shooting hand. It's really able to sell on why it is that figure arts needed to take a whack at the Spider-Punk figure to then complete the rest of the Across the Spider-Verse wave since they've already nailed Miles, they've already nailed Gwen, as well as Miguel O'Hara. But I feel like maybe they got just a little too comfy when it came to punk as far as actually cranking it up a notch because it's really about that physique that I just couldn't really pull away how almost not different it felt from that of the Marvel Legends. You generally expect at least a weightier feel to the plastic or a little bit better quality with the plastic and though I was able to find said quality within the joints that are almost always found on said figure arts, they still weren't able to do much to make me look at the Marvel Legends and go, 
yeah, if you're still on a bit of a budget, still pick up the Spider-Punk, at least the original Spider-Punk Marvel Legends for, for the Across the Spider-Verse wave. Or if you want to go for something that's a little bit on the different side, though I personally cannot bring myself to pick it up, that upcoming variant that repaints with the purple newspaper kind of aesthetic. But it does come with the unmasked Hobie Brownhead. So if you were looking for that extra accessory or you were looking to, some, to have some kind of Spider-Punk figure at all in your collection and you're on a bit of a limited budget, you see right here that you are barely noticing the difference as far as scaling and proportioning between the figure arts and the Marvel Legends. And what you're really paying for as far as that escalated price would practically just be the difference between jumping from a 1080p resolution of a movie or a game or what have you to then 4K HDR. It really matters to you if you are that prestigious or that dare say bougie about your quality of figures and if you're not because i personally know some people that aren't they're willing to watch a movie in standard definition then th that's practically the sort of people that the marvel legends is likely are going to be speaking to so even though i am moved enough to at least give the spider punk here a 7 out of 10 from ace figure arts I wouldn't necessarily blame you if you decided to hold back on this particular unit for the Marvel Legends to then kind of fit in with the rest of the figures because you'll notice from some of the footage and some of the shots that he blends in not too badly. It's only once you start squinting that you'll pick apart those details that will then be decided by you whether or not you want to go for those added details for that extra price tag and it definitely looks like this won't be the last time we're going to be doing a form of that comparison because finally almost a full year and a half after the release of the film we're getting spider-man india both from marvel legends and figure arts practically around the same time though it does look like marvel legends is beating figure arts to the punch this time around so i'm curious to see how the comparison is going to be laid down here since we're going to be getting the Legends first and then the Figure Arts and whether or not it's going to be a similar case where maybe the Figure Arts, which was announced first technically and revealed first, will have some added benefits over the Marvel Legends because maybe the Legends got a little too comfy. I don't know. But it definitely looks like we're going to have another comparison on our hands and I'll definitely try to bring it to you guys as quickly as I possibly can. For now though, if you guys have Spider-Punk in your collection, whether it be for Marvel Legends or Figure Arts, let me know what you guys think of either figure. If you happen to own both, what are your guys' comparisons? Which one do you prefer one over the other? Do you think that the $90 price tag on the Figure Arts justify it beating out the Marvel Legends? Or do you think that this is one of the off cases where Legends ended up having Figure Arts beat? Let me know down below and when you guys are down there, hit the thumbs up button if you like this video, thumbs down if you did not. Shout out to our executive producers over at the level 2 tier supporting not only this video but the entirety of the channel, Tom Bowling. And as always, stay humble. I'll catch you guys later.